Good to go. Awesome. All right. Nice. And then, yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fear to Love Journey po podcast. My name is Sean. I'll be your host today. And today I'll be talking to a wonderful coach. His name is, how would you like to refer to, how would you like me to refer you, by the way? You can just call me Ko. Oh, okay. Yeah, full name is Koharalan. Koharalan, nice. Yeah. That's such a cool name, brother. <laughs> got, it, got it right, man. You're one of the rare ones. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, man, uh, let's, yeah, talk about yourself. Tell me about yourself and what you're all about, you know. Okay, this is my favorite part of, of the interview, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we, we tell the stories kind of so many times over and over again. It's like, um, okay, yeah, what, what's really important? And so I guess, you know, some of the most important things about my story is that, are that, you know, number one, my history was pretty rough, you know, as, as a, I had a, a fairly decent childhood. I mean, I don't have any complaints. We had our share of trauma, just like most families do, you know, but it wasn't horrible. But as I became older, you know, I felt more and more disconnected from people, from adults. Uh, I had a lot of distrust from the things I experienced growing up. And then the older I got, the more it kind of, I kind of moved away from the depth of myself and I lost touch with part of myself. And I was seeking that in the world is what it seems like, you know, in, in retrospect, it was like, I knew something was missing, something I needed to fix or change or find or discover, but I didn't know what it was. And so all of my activities were directed outward, trying to, trying to uncover that. And a lot of the things that I discovered, you know, were like uh, violence, drugs, you know, uh, bad relationships, all these kinds of things. And I, I created and attracted this, this madness into my life because, you know, I was very disconnected inside, disconnected from my spirit. Um, and also very much mind identified as a small limited self, as a, uh, as a victim, even very much a victim. And so even though I, you know, I did my best to work at becoming a successful person and at being happy, but I had no idea like how to really attain that. And so over time I experienced, I was fortunate enough to experience enough pain in my life that it got to a point to where it was so bad. I had to stop. I had to pause and just be like, okay, whatever I was thinking got me here. You know, whatever my best understanding of life and myself and the world was, here's where it got me into this horrible situation, which by the time I was 28, I was in prison mm. and things were looking for pretty, pretty bleak for me. I'd lost everything. I'd lost my relationships, you know, lost all, all my possessions and everything. And it was pretty, it was, you know, pretty hopeless experience to be in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also the environment that I was in was very, very negative. You know, when you're in a place like that, it's not like there are people who are um, looking to uplift others. Most of the people in that situation are at, at best just trying to struggle and survive. And at worst, they're very actively seeking to do others harm, mm. make themselves feel better. So that was the environment I was in. Um, but I'm very, very grateful for that situation. In fact, I often talk about that time period of my life as being like one of the greatest gifts that I experienced. Yeah. Because again, it, it stopped me long enough to really investigate some things and to ask some questions, some really big questions. And through those questions, I started to get some answers that maybe there was hope, maybe there was another way of being or living or understanding, or like um, there was like this whole other reality I started to discover, or at least you know hear about when I encountered meditation and spirituality and things like that, it started mm. to open my mind to possibility. Mm. And that maybe things didn't always have to be like this. And maybe like the way out wasn't just doing more of what didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I find a, a pattern that I've seen in many coaches or people who've really went, literally went from fear to love. Really a big pattern is that the life, 
that they have a life-changing moment where they go through so much pain to the point they're like, you know what? Shit, this isn't working. Like, and it's that pain, that that valuable gift of pain that pushes them to like literally like get out of their box and explore. And um it's uh you're right, man. It, it is a gift, man. It it really is a gift. You know, pain, pain and pleasure are the two greatest motivators, right? And like, I remember reading about this from Tony Robbins years and years ago before I even, before I even got that far deep into it, uh, before I had really hit rock bottom. But you talked about like, you know, pain and pleasure are these twin motivators. You know, we can either be motivated by pain or we can be motivated by pleasure. Most of us would like to be motivated by pleasure. However, the reality is that pain is a much more powerful motivator for most people, especially in the beginning when we really need to create massive transformation. We got to like break down those walls of victimhood and blaming mm. and, and, you know, holding on to guilt and shame and all those old patterns. Mm. The pain of it all has become so great that we must do something different. We have to break out of it. But then hopefully over time, we start to learn that we don't need to always experience so much pain to learn these lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. It's, it's, uh, I'm curious, by the way, what type of coach would you consider yourself to be in your definition? You know, it's a good question. I often struggle with this label myself, you know, because I also have a lot of different hats that I wear and I work in different communities. So lately, I've been really working with men, mostly for the last couple of years. And mm -hmm. so I consider myself to be an empowerment coach. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone who now, empowerment is a little bit of a dubious word because if you look at the dictionary definition, it means like, I give you the power to do something that you couldn't do before. Like, let's say we work in a company together and you, you're going to be the purchaser. So I'm going to give you buying power, right? I'm going to let you make the, those decisions. Now I've empowered you, right? But where's your power coming from? It came from me. To me, I don't, that's not the way I use the word. And I have, uh, I get into a, a little arguments with people sometimes about this because they're like, no, you're not using that word correctly. I was like, well, maybe not, but this is what I mean. It, real empowerment comes from within. It's power that comes in from within. Yeah, yeah, definitely, 100%. It really is like, really like the work we do as coaches, you know, all we are, are is a mirror of the person that we're working with. And we literally reflect to them and show them what they are showing within themselves and it's like what you said it's power within you know like yes we may be able to give give you guys clarity we might help your relationship life you might feel more empowered but it's not because of us it's because of you you made that happen and uh it's it's a beauty in this it, it shows that like once people realize it's helping happening within them it gives them self it, it gives them self-empowerment knowing that okay you know what i have a coach now and it doesn't even matter if you have a coach i don't need to rely on people as long as i know and i have a deep con and I, as long as i stay connected with my true self this power within really no matter where i go i'm fine even if i'm alone <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, the other benefit of course is like the benefit of course is like you talked about, like we can show things to people that maybe they're not aware of themselves. So like, that's a big part of it is like, we're not aware of what we're not aware of. One of the things I always tell my clients is that awareness is key. Number one, if you're not aware of a thing, you're powerless to change it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Ha. How can you change something you don't know about? <laughs> yeah. And if you see just the symptoms, right? If you only see the mm. symptom and you say, this is the problem, here's what I need to fix. But you're not seeing mm. the underlying causes of that. Then we're forever trying to fix things on a surface level. Yeah. Really, yeah. are going to keep producing new problems, new challenges yep. to until we root them out. So that's another key benefit that a coach who has experience with this stuff can offer because if I've already navigated all these different eddies and 
woods and wilderness and deserts and everything else and face these challenges and overcome them. And I can demonstrate that I've overcome them. That's a big, big part. Uh, so, because it's not enough just to know a thing mentally, but we have to have it deeply enough into our spirit to where we can duplicate it. And then yeah. eventually if we want to get into a position like you or I, we got to be able to break it down so well that not only can we demonstrate it, duplicate it, but we can also teach it to others so that they have it. And then it's like, yes, that's what we're doing is we're lighting that inner fire for them so that they never need us again. Yeah. 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 That's every coach's wish, just being like, yo, I want to help you, but like eventually I want you not to need me anymore, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's that's one of the things that we should have. Not not all coaches have that, but if they're really standing strong in their integrity, that's what yeah. it's, it's the same principle with uh, you know, religious leaders, gurus, and things of the past. Some of them have corrupted and then they have all that power and they don't want freedom for their mm -hmm. demos. It's like the healthcare system. They don't want freedom for people. Mm -hmm. They want to keep them dependent. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want to keep them dependent 100%. And... Not everyone across the board, but the system is set up like that, right? It makes sense because if I free you of the need to depend on me for your health, well, you'll never be a client of mine again, you know? Yeah. And so if I think that my wealth comes from you, that's a scary thing. And I'm going to work against that. But if I understand that my, my real wealth, my abundance, my peace of mind, my happiness, my joy, my love, my courage, if that's all stuff that's from within and you can't take it from me, that's empowerment. Yeah, that, that, that truly is empowerment. No need to convince anyone of your of your value. There's no need to take anything from anyone. No need for any objects. Nothing. It's just it speaks for itself. And just your presence alone is value. And this is something I learned when I was having when I was healing myself and I had a coach of my own as well. Like this is a type of work that even that I've experienced very like I've experienced it in my own personal life. I know how it feels to have a coach to be lost. And when a coach really guides you and opens yourself up, it's that's that that's true empowerment, man. It's uh you know, like I don't know where the hell I'm going right now, actually. <laughs> hey, we purposely were like, yeah, we're just gonna let this thing go where it goes. So yeah, 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 man. And you know, something I've been quite curious about is really masculine and feminine. And you, you work a lot with men, right? So I'm curious what you work regarding with the masculine aspects of them and the feminine aspects of them. What do you work with them in regards to that? That's a great question, brother. Uh, I knew this was going to be a great conversation. And it's funny because, you know, I work with men mostly, but I also have to understand the feminine and women in general, right? Otherwise, that'll be a blind spot for me. And a lot of the guys that I work with are coming out of really bad relationships as well. So that means that they've done some things to create that situation. It's either coming as a result of the way that they feel and think about themselves and the world around them, which is what their inner state is. Uh, it's, it could be a result of them giving their power away consistently over time because they felt they needed to in order to secure the love that they were missing. You see yeah. so all these power dynamics and relationships, and it's really quite interesting. Oftentimes what these guys experience, if they've been giving their power away, is they experience emasculation, mm. right? They start to uh, reside more in their feminine nature and their, their women can often sometimes take on the more domineering masculine role. And yeah. nobody wants that. If you're a masculine identified man, which just, you know, meaning like if you just feel more identified with the masculine aspect of your self, mm -hmm. you're not going to be happy long term in a relationship where you're being emasculated. Yeah. Where you're being denigrated, where your value isn't being appreciated and where you have to make confessions all the time give your power away, compromise constantly, constantly let your boundaries get overstepped. And this is doing a, a number of things. So it's, it feels like shit to us when we're doing it, but the other person, then they lose more respect for us. They feel yeah. like, okay, 
well, he obviously can't handle this little bit. He's already screwed that up. So I guess I got to do more. Now I got to take on more of the responsibilities. Now the woman is becoming more controlling. Mm. We have this, we have this toxic aspect on both sides. The men have become pushovers and the women have become domineering. And mm. nobody's happy. Yeah. Yeah. So a misperception that people have when they start to discover this is they start to think, oh, I just need to be more masculine. So a lot of these guys are like, I just need, I wasn't masculine enough. I need to be more masculine. But in, in my experience, that's not the case because the feminine is always going to be primary. Mm. And it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, but I started to experience this directly for myself. And then it started to weave its way into my programs and, and coaching. And it's simply, you know, the way I look at it is the way I experience it. That's actually a better way to describe it because it's all energy. And that's one of the things I do is whenever I'm teaching, when I'm coaching, when I'm doing programs, retreats, I do my best and I invite anyone to call me out on it if I make a misstep, but I do my best to always speak from my own experience. So if even yeah. I'm something and I'm relating like a, a scientific fact, let's say, but I bring it home. I talk about how this, how I know this is true in my experience because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Yeah. And so in my experience, as I started to work with more energy, and I started to have that same mindset, like, oh, I just need more yang energy, more masculine, right? But I started to realize that there's only so much yang you can put into the system mm. because it's a limited container. Yeah, yeah. If I want yeah. more yang, I have to grow my container. Mm. And the growing of the container is the expansion of the feminine. Mm, yes it's so important like even men like they really have to like of course it's great to cultivate your masculine side of yourself but the femininity the feminine side also has to be really cultivated and nourished because really all humans have to be a balance of both male or female right and we should really call, allow ourselves to access these energies from choice not by compulsivity like you know like for exactly like exactly what you said you know a man falls back into like a feminine type of energy when he allows his girlfriend to push him over and go over his boundaries and all that stuff but Really, that's unhealthy femininity. There's unhealthy masculinity. There's a shadow part of these energies. Absolutely. Uh, but when we get in touch with the divine femininity, the divine masculinity, you know, that's a wording, whatever. But I think it's the best way to explain it. You know, you use femininity in a way that allows yourself to be, to experience life much more better <laughs> effortlessly you know you, you allow the yang and the yin to merge together so so to say right you take action without feeling like it's action you just fucking do it you know yes effortless action right that's that's kind of like the merging of those two energies yeah very yeah. dynamic so one of the things because you, you just mentioned something that reminded me of this too is uh you know, let me ask you when you think about vulnerability, does that seem more like a feminine or masculine quality? Definitely is much more, at least, you know, for me, it's, it's more feminine, definitely. And why is that? Why, why do you feel that way? Because you're, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, it's like going out butt naked. It's like really exposing yourself and not having any sort of control, just kind of like, I surrender you. I surrender to this whole experience, you know? You're yeah. not doing anything. You're just showing people who you are. And that's where, that's that's allowing. That's, I guess that's feminine. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. It's uh, everything you said. It's allowing, it's opening, it's giving permission. Mm. It's surrendering. It's a yes. huge part of it. And when this is done correctly, it's not weakness. A lot of people have this confusion about vulnerability being weak, right? Because as men, especially in our current culture and for you know the last hundreds of years, we've been trained to shut down emotionally, to protect, to guard, to not let people in. 
And, mm-hmm. and that's what's been taught to us is strength. Now, if you're on a battlefield, it's not time to talk about your feelings. That's just a fact. You know what I mean? And, and anyone who's out there would agree with that. But if you don't process those feelings after it's happened, you're still going to be carrying that trauma with you the rest of your life. You know what I mean? You're going to be in PTSD and survival mode. And so yeah. the feminine is absolutely necessary in all those situations. So even if you're in war. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I talk about on, uh, on my retreats is about a vulnerability how it is the portal or the gateway to everything that we want to experience. Yeah. 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 Now just, this just occurred to me one day as I was, I was looking at this chart of emotions, I was writing it down. It's like, you know, we got the lowest emotions on the bottom. We have like apathy, grief, fear, lust, you know, control, power, force, um, uh, greed, you know, anger, all these kind of lower emotions kind of going up the scale, a little more energy to each one. We get to anger. We've got a lot of emotion, right? But it's very destructive. And then, you know, at a certain point we break through and we have all of these higher level emotions like love, uh, courage, peace, happiness, Mm -hmm. uh, fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And what I started to realize, I was looking at this is like this, this gateway, right? To get from the lower level vibration emotions to these exalted emotions, which seem to have no downside, right? So what's the downside of feeling greater freedom, right? I don't know, but you feel more and more anger. There's definitely a downside to it. Eventually you make yourself sick. Yeah. 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 And so I realized that this, there's a portal to enter these higher realm yeah. levels of emotion and as i started to break it down look at it i started seeing it's vulnerability vulnerability is the portal which allows us to experience everything that we want to experience and if we're not willing to be vulnerable we're not going to get those experiences yeah it's you know what i love your approach with that because it's like very nuanced as well and it's really it speaks very clearly because like for me i always knew that I always felt like pain, like very low vibration energies, emotions and all that. If you do things the right way, I'm saying the right way and not get sucked into the content of the emotion, but instead feeling it and being vulnerable to it and surrendering into it, that super low vibration energy could be a portal to greater peace, love, happiness. And Really, those low vibration energies, it could be your best friend in that case, if you do it that way. And I like, especially in my own experience, you know, whenever I would really feel deep into a really hard emotion, like really put my intention on it and attention to it. It's like after maybe just that hour, I, it's totally gone. And I feel oh fuck, relieved, you know? And I could live again. I could do what I want. I, you know, it's a lot of block. Some the blockage I would focus on would be gone. And uh, that's, I guess, that's the type of work that you do for people. Yeah, that's literally what happens. Is when we're holding on to emotions, it's creating uh, electromagnetic fields that block our energy flow. And so yeah. it's, it's literally, it's a couple of things that are going on here. Number one, there's trapped energy in our system in the form of emotion, in the form of those low vibration emotions. Um, if we're really shut down, we might not be in touch with the emotions. We might yeah. just feel stress, mm-hmm. pressure, tension, constriction in the body. And this is often where I will guide people through to start. It's like, just focus mm-hmm. on that feeling of tension. You, you might not be able to, if I ask you about, um, why you're upset or why you're feeling depressed and things you might just go into story into yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff, and there's no feeling there yeah, yeah you get to the physicality of it the root of it mm. in its expression right is the physical tension and then if i go into that physical tension that's just a subtle layer deeper to get into the emotion mm. but in any case there's a lot of trapped energy there and then it also takes subconscious suppression energy to keep it all in place to hold it down and to lock it 
And we're not doing this consciously, right? But it's using our energy, whether we're aware of it or not. We're using, if we have, you know, this much energy, we might be using half of it to suppress. So when yeah. we can contact these things and through meditation and through these various releasing methods to dissolve that, transform it, unwind it, then yeah, it can literally, it's like a stem cell. These energies can just transform into anything. So from pain and grief to absolute joy. And it's like, it didn't take any work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so crazy. Like it's... You could really, it's, it's, uh, you could really experience for yourself to really understand this type of, uh, type of change and transmission that you're talking about. Like, I've, I've gone, me personally, I've gone through a moment where I was really suffering from intense fear, intense fear, feeling into that intense fear. But the more I surrender myself into it, the more it subsided, subsided, subsided to it really actually turned to presence, peace, joy. And I look around me, everything feels so clear. So mm -hmm. this energy, what you're saying, the play of energy is so, it's, it's playful, it's fun, it's not a work, you know? It's, it's like, I feel like shit right now. Let me just focus on that. Isn't, there's, no, there's no, like, this is not school. This is not something that you study or logically analyze. Because you can never logically analyze it. It's more of focusing on feeling. And as long as you could put your attention on the feeling, that's all you could, that, that's, that's it. That's all you could do. That's, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I'm yeah, curious, that's, though. To create when, someone, when someone does, like, master their energy and really foster that type of, like, I guess gets more embodied. What type of, I guess, would you say it'll be more attractive actually? When someone becomes be able to master their energy? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the thing is once you master your energy, then you can master your frequency signature. And that's what's really attractive or not attractive. People are picking up on that more than the physical body. Mm. And so even though and we, we know this too, because like we've all experienced feeling like in a really high state, feeling like really good about ourselves for whatever reason, or even if it's just in contrast, we don't, we feel like way less shitty than, than we had yesterday. And we know that when we go out, we, we attract a whole different type of person, different experiences, maybe get looks from people who wouldn't have even noticed us before. And so it's just the same person right? The same physicality, what's changed, their energy's changed. So they're, what they're vibrating out into the universe is changed. And so like attracts like, so if I'm vibrating to high state and I'm feeling good about myself, that's attractive. I mean, what's more attractive to you being around someone who's really happy, gregarious, uh, mm. supportive, or someone who's really judgmental and angry and nervous or worried a lot? Yep. Yep. And we know this in two and so the obvious answer. <laughs> no, I said no. It's the obvious answer. <laughs> yeah, it's so obvious. Yeah, it's so obvious. yeah, but we don't we don't pause to recognize it, and we don't have the power. We have the power, but it hasn't been developed to change our state. Mm -hmm. To recognize, okay, what's going on? Here's the state I'm in. Like, let's say I'm residing in a state of fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. That could be, you know, it could be many, many situations. Maybe I want to approach somebody. Maybe I see somebody I find attractive and I want to approach them and go talk to them. But let's say now I feel this fear inside. So I might judge myself for having a fear and say, ah, I shouldn't be afraid. I should just go talk to them. I'm, I'm an idiot. Why am I so fearful? And so I'll force myself to go talk to them, right? But now I'm speaking to them through this fear. Mm, yes, yes, 100%. I get you, yep. They're picking up on that, right? And so yeah. even if I say all the right words, even if my tonality is excellent, they're picking up that vibe, right? And that's what's the most prominent thing in how they're going to react and respond. Yeah, yeah. So much, especially men, I'll say men, we're so much in our heads. 
and uh we always you know uh it really is about that like the energy that vibe getting more in touch with the feeling aspect rather than the actual content the tonality the, the words you say that's what i realized it's like i got i briefly got into pick up a little bit and uh you know, like, uh, I was kind of, you know, I, I was getting some results. But when I got into relationships, my insecurity would speak out eventually. And yeah. I'll eventually be exposed, literally. <laughs> That's it. That's the funniest thing about pickup, too, is that, yeah, you can you can manipulate and you can use tactics and you can get a relationship. And I've done it, man. And then, whoa. That's when the real trouble starts, because if I didn't do that inner work, I didn't prepare myself for this relationship. It's going to create yeah. a lot, lot of problems. Yeah, exactly. And back, it's, to, it's that, back to that initial situation with the fear, like, let's say and I want to approach somebody, but I'm feeling afraid. So, you know, let's back up and do it, do it differently instead of just forcing myself to do what I don't want to do, which there's something to be said for that. There comes a time when sometimes you just have to do the thing that you're afraid to do. You just got to fucking do it. And that's all there is to it. But if you have time on your side, right, then it's always best if you can release the fear. Mm, yes. Because if I'm residing in that state of fear and I'm like, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if this person's going to like me. You know, what if I say something stupid? What if I embarrass myself? What if these people see me get rejected? Mm. So even if I force myself to act through all of that, which that's better than 90% of the men out there. So I, I still give you kudos for making that effort, <laughs> but a much better approach would be to stop, sit, to go inside and meditate and mm. find out what's going on in here. Why do I feel afraid when I think about approaching this person? Let's examine mm. it. Ooh, it's constriction in my gut, you know, happens. And then I, I, I get nervous and I feel like, um, uh, what if she doesn't like me? Or what yeah. if I come off creepy? So, all right. So wait a second now let's, shift that right and let's release some of that stuff and maybe even yeah. go to the root of it and find out well, what's going on what's going on that i feel that way right if i felt a massive amount of self-worth if i felt like i really had someone something to offer this person and any person that i come into contact with because i know i have value inside and i'm familiar with myself i've elicited my own value i know what's important to me i know where i stand all these things I've got real self-worth because I know that, you know, what I think is important. It matters. It has value. value. It's valid. Mm. It may not be always right. It may not be in agreement with, with what you think, but that doesn't mean that I'm not entitled to my opinion. And so as I start to unwind that fear, release those feelings of insecurity through, you know, various releasing practices and meditative practices that we do, as that starts to unwind underneath of it, is the natural sense of self-worth. Yeah. I was yeah. just quoting someone earlier today and explaining this process, how we do things, we wanna develop our confidence more, but it's really about bringing it up to the surface. It's not about putting it, it's not about stuffing it in from outside. Yeah. I know, yeah, yeah. It's that when we release fear, lack of self-worth, insecurity, underneath of that stuff is this innate support, strength, security, that is ours that we can't ever lose touch with 100% because it's our essential nature. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. You are, you, you've got it, bro. You, you've got it. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, I was going to say something actually, uh, the essential nature of who you are. That's, that's what I mean when I say rediscovering your true loving self. See, because this self is not the self that you think it is, that you think a self is. It's not an identity. It's not uh, like a personality trait. Like many people, they form this identity of themselves. Like, oh, I'm stupid. Oh, I'm, a, I'm ugly. Oh, girls won't like me. I'm Asian or, you know, oh, oh, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I, I'm too short. You know, they have all these yeah. many beliefs and they identify, they think it's me. And because of that downfall, they feel they have, they f therefore feel like they cannot get women or they feel therefore cannot feel like they cannot pursue their purpose. 
you know? Yeah. Or I can get a woman, but I got to make up for these flaws. Yeah. So I'll be super nice. I'll do everything she wants, right? I'll let my boundaries <laughs> get crossed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be a nice guy. You know what I mean? And this is how so many people end up. And they end up lonely, depressed, and, and you know. Lonely. Yeah. And this is why I feel like spiritual process is so important if you want to get those parts in your life right the way you desire it to be. You have to do spiritual process because when you realize that that personality trait that you think you are, that you think you have, is actually just an idea and isn't you, and that what's you is actually the one experiencing that perception of yourself, Mm -hmm. then you know like then you realize oh shit like it's not real you we realize it's not real there's no need to do any actual work to let to like you know to convince yourself otherwise you know it's not real you don't have to say affirmations i'm i'm confident i'm alpha male or i i you know yeah of, of course affirmations do have their benefit but when you realize that true self that true confident self loving self within that you were talking about you realize that you know that you you become free and when you are with a woman you no longer tell yourself oh i'm stupid i'm i'm ugly so i have to make up for that no you you none of that's in your head you just enjoy that woman you know yes yeah <laughs> you're actually focused on what's here and now and getting to experience it in fullness instead of only a portion of it because we're stuck in our heads like you were saying and so i love what you said about it's it's really about contacting the real and when we know what's real and we can decipher the real from the false everything becomes a whole lot simpler because if i recognize that that idea of myself as small as weak as um insecure as unattractive as broke whatever the issue is and when I see that that's not actually what I am, that's an appearance. Mm. That's a, that's, that's, that may be my personality, right? But even your personality isn't who you are. That's just what's expressing in the moment. And personalities can change. The only thing a personality is, is it's the express, it's the expression of your thoughts and feelings about yourself and the world around you, your inner state express yeah. personality. Yeah. And that's all malleable. We can change that. But even no matter what kind of a personality we create, that's still not who we are. This yeah. essence inside of us, it's beyond all those qualities. Yeah. Because it's eternal. It's all loving, as you were saying, right? All giving, all openness, infinite capacity, consciousness, awareness. And it is the background for all experience. It's the one thing that you cannot take out of the equation. Yeah, you can never take that away. You, it, it's always in the background, background of all thought, background of all activity, background. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> and that's what they refer as, you know, this, this is actually, you know, the foundation, you know, even religions are based on that realization, you know? Many, you know, what, spiritual teachers, Buddha, Christ. You know, I don't know them personally, but I'm just speaking of my own perception. But <laughs> they've all realized this whole allness, that core being, right? And God is a description of that. It's the label of that. It's mm -hmm. into words what you can't explain in words. And, uh, okay, now I'm just falling really deep into the spiritual stuff, but it's... Uh, that was it's good, great. man. Hey, you got it too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, yeah, it's a, it, it is a really, really strong power within. And uh, yeah, it's, it's great that you, you know, it, it's, I respect everyone who do, does this work for people to help them really let, unwind and let go. Cause it's, uh, you know, dealing with the ego and dealing with all that, on yourself is a challenge but on other people is a le another level <laughs> mm. yeah man mm. so uh, now i'm curious 
what if you were to okay i'll direct this more towards guys then because you worked primarily with men but it could also apply to women as well if a if a guy was like really feeling this a lot of pain and they feel lost and they really want to get their relationship dating life career life any sort of parts in their life back together what's one exercise you could give them just a simple exercise you could give them that could really give them a glimpse of what we are talking about mm, okay yeah that's that's uh that's good so and i'll probably be saying things that that maybe isn't anything new because some of the processes that we work with like on retreats and in the courses are it's a little more in depth we're going to have to have a little more um, of a background mm. understanding than just yeah. to you know jump right into it in a couple of minutes but the premise is going to be the same so like if i'm feeling like i want to create change in my life like i want to have massive transformation let's say in the area of finances or relationship or just my own inner sense of self like i want to have more confidence be okay with who i am like shed the insecurity and things like that um and that's what i like to work too because even like if i want a goal if i have a particular goal but i don't address the underlying stuff it's just gonna be i'm trying to use more control more power more force to make it happen and I'm not tapping inner wealth of power, which is infinite. Mm -hmm. right? That's what I like to tap into to do the heavy lifting, as it were. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I get people to, first of all, contact the state that they're in. So number one, we can all try this right now. Think of something in your life that you've been struggling with or challenged by or an area of your life which you would like to experience greater freedom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you do that, you know, kind of start to feel into the body and where do you feel that constriction? Where do you feel that lack or that pressure? And just notice kind of how it feels in the body when you're in that state of neediness or insecurity or not enough. Mm. And then one of the things I like to do is take people through this process where now that we're in the body, we're feeling the feelings. And I just say, you know, let yourself be like an, an investigator, right? A compassionate journalist, even like, let's say he's in a war zone, right? There's all this conflict going on, but he's not, he doesn't have opinions on the matter. He's just trying to get the scoop, trying to understand what's really going on. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the mindset that you take going into this. It's just an exploration, an inner exploration with no judgment. And so feel as we're feeling into that lack that limitation right or that struggle that challenge that we're feeling check to see what it would be like if it were possible to let go of that mm. challenge to let go of that feeling of struggle mm. and if that were possible how would that feel inside as that begin to unwind and open up mm. and as we can start to sense the greater space now, even more light. A lot of times we sense the setting down of a burden that we've been carrying, mm. maybe without even realizing we're carrying it. Mm. And so as we do that, now we can think about that situation where we were challenged or struggling mm. and invite yourself to imagine what it would be like if it were possible to address that situation or to face that situation from a place of inner strength, confidence, empowerment, mm. acceptance, love, joy. Mm. And if we were able to shift into that inner state of courage, of power, of real strength, yeah, how would that feel? And feeling those feelings now, how would that shift and change the way that we see this situation? What does that open up for us as we start to uh, put yourself in that situation again? And how does it feel now having contacted this sense of strength and support and power, empowerment? Mm. What does that open up inside? And how does that situation look differently now? And so that's a lot of what I'll, I will kind of walk through people uh, through this process is getting them to shift out of their states of limitation and access a greater level of possibility. Yeah. Because in my experience, like possibility is the ultimate power. It's infinite potential. It's the quantum field. Yeah. 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 
100%. And commitment to make commitment and attention to that possibility is a guarantee that you make it there. And、mm. I,、uh, it's, it's so crazy. Like,、uh, you know, I've done this before too. It's like, I remember, like, for example, I used to feel very jealous in my, in, in my relationships. I'd be like afraid if I had, like,、uh, I had my girlfriend flirting with a guy or with a guy friend, that sort of stuff. And,、uh, you know, I, I was so familiar with that feeling of lack. But then once I started to face that feeling and just allowing myself to release it, I also got in touch with the loving sort of feeling, like, oh, wait. If she truly enjoyed herself with this man, God, I'm happy for her. Like that true loving feeling. Like it's not like I'm not seeing her as this girlfriend that I have to really latch on to and control over. I'm seeing her as a human being enjoying herself with another human being. Even though maybe my girlfriend, like just that idea, being in terms with that idea is all, is, is, Even your girlfriend, when she gives you shit tests and you respond that way, oh, you know, like、mm. it's, it's beautiful. So, one of the things that my、uh, releasing coach used to say is that he would talk about unconditional love versus the, what passes for love in our society. And he'd talk about the difference. And he would talk about, You know, relationships and difficulties, and share one of his own experiences where he went out to a. It was like this was back in the 70s, I guess. And this was like, a, and maybe out in Esalen, out in California. And they were having some kind of a、um, like sex positive retreat. And he went there with his girlfriend. By the end of the retreat, she told him, I'm breaking up with you and I'm going to go home with this guy instead that I met at the retreat. And so, He lived in New York. He drove out to California for the retreat. So he had three and a half days, I guess, of driving back alone to process.、Mm-hmm. And you can imagine the feelings that it brought up probably, you know, jealousy, insecurity, not enough. What's wrong with me? Anger, resentment, you know, guilt, shame. All the feelings were coming up. And he started to do this process that we work with. In releasing and apply it to his own relationship. And so he started to ask himself, like, well, if I had no need for her, right?、Mm-hmm. What would that be like?、Mm-hmm. If she didn't need any, if, in other words, if she didn't need to be any kind of a way in order for me to feel okay, what would that be like? And through this process of unwinding and, and Releasing his attachment to her and all those beliefs about what it meant that he wasn't good enough, you know, he wasn't attractive, that he was going to be alone forever, the fears and things. He sort of recognized that there's this love that's deeper that doesn't want to hold on, that doesn't attach itself and say, Oh, I'll love you if you do these things, right? I'll love you if you don't flirt with other guys. I love you if you stay my girlfriend, if you don't leave me because you found someone else that you found more attractive. Yeah. And so unconditional love is different. It loves you in spite of what you do, because of what you do, doesn't matter. And the way that he said this, which was so succinct that I love, is that unconditional love wants for the other person what the other person wants for themselves.、Mm. So, exactly what you're pointing out is if, if, And of course, we're gonna, we're, gonna,、uh, we're gonna make a caveat here and say that her flirtation is innocent, right?、Yeah. If it's not innocent flirtation, that's a whole other thing. That's a boundary crossing. And you know, if that makes you feel uncomfortable and, and because it's inappropriate,、yeah. then you can certainly make a, a boundary there and say, this isn't okay. Can't allow this、yeah. to continue. I love you. But this isn't acceptable. And if I allow this to continue, I won't be loving myself. But if it is all in good fun, then you can certainly say, hey, if this is what brings her joy, it doesn't diminish my love in any way. It doesn't diminish me in any way whatsoever. 
And if it makes her happy, then it makes me happy because I love her. I want to her to experience happiness. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's unconditional love, man. It's it's like uh I think our first most people I'm talking about most people, okay. I I don't even want to generalize it's a lot of people's experience of unconditional love stems from their relationship with their parents. Although, of course, a lot of parents have expectations on their children, but I feel it's a natural parent's inclination to be unconditionally loving. At the end of the day, even if they have ego, they want them to be a certain way, you know, you know, and my, many people say, like, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, you could really rely on your family, you know, because mm -hmm. no matter, you know, because they're there for you. So it's really being that space for the people that you're with to feel free to be anything they want instead of feeling constricted. And when you're able to give that to someone, they really do truthfully thank you and appreciate you because many people are not like that. And this unconditional love is a very big strength, very big strength. Absolutely. It's freeing on our side as well. Because again, if we can tap into that, then we can recognize that that love flowing through me is what I really want. Yeah. I want that, actually, I want that more than I want to force this person to behave one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's stressful, man. Honestly, like you want to control someone, but they're not doing what you want. And then you're just going to get more and more frustrated. You're like, yo, dude, it, when you tap into the unconditional love, you just get to chill and relax again. You know, it's, uh, it's a, it's a great feeling, man. Anyways, uh, I guess uh, this is where I'll be concluding this. I'm curious, man. Do you have anything that you're doing right now that you want to tell the world, tell whoever's watching? Yeah, absolutely, man. There are a few things that are pretty exciting. Number one, we've got a retreat coming up. It's a men's retreat. It's a winter retreat. It's in the state of Maine. And that's going to be March 3rd through the 6th. If someone's interested in finding out more about that, they can go to my website, koharalan.com. It's K-O-H-A-R-A-L-A-N.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can message me, reach out to me. I'm pretty good about getting back to people. I love doing this work. So when people reach out to me for help, I'm on it. Trust me. Um, and so that's one thing is the retreat. Another thing I'm offering is a 12 week intensive course for somebody who really wants to learn and embody the eight levels of human evolution that go through like dealing all with all of our core issues, such as fear of death, uh, separation, grief, all these kind of things. And we learn to transform them into their evolved counterparts like self worth, self love, empowerment, connection, and these things. And so that's a 12 week course that I take people through. It, it includes one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching to get them through the process as well. And then I have a year long mastermind for somebody who really wants to not only just take that and do the healing work, but then create a vision for their future and begin to manifest that. And that's what I put on more so in the mastermind program. So again, uh, koharlan at gmail.com. You can always send me an email that way as well. Mm, awesome yeah of course i'll be putting the links anyways uh yeah i guess that's it i hereby bless everyone watching this call i hereby bless you too cole and uh <laughs> you know i uh yeah i hope you guys have a fabulous day peace out thanks so much man it was a pleasure brother pleasure